here in Lathrop, Pennsylvania for the Great American Banana Split Celebration. America's Roadsides, the welcoming shores that travelers wash up on as they zip from coast to coast. And if it's America's intertwining web of roadways that can take you anywhere, it's the roadsides that can take you anywhere in time. For example, here's one in Latro, Pennsylvania that can take you to 1904. It's hard to imagine, but it was a time when bananas, yes, bananas, were just becoming readily available in the United States. And in Lake Trail, Pennsylvania, a soda jerk named David Strickler owned a pharmacy right here. And when he got his hands on some bananas, he changed the dessert world forever. The banana split was invented in 1904 by David Strickler. He was a pit pharmacy student and he worked at Tassel Pharmacy during breaks and things, which is located at 805 Ligonier Street. This is Brianna Tomac. She pretty much runs the show when it comes to celebrating banana splits in Latrobe. Things were abuzz with preparations for the celebration at the Latrobe Chamber of Commerce when we swung by. And there were students from St. Vincent College who came in and they wanted him to make something different and fun and so he came up with the banana split and um, at the time it cost double what most other Sundays cost at that time so the banana split was 10 cents. And at nearby St. Vincent College, word spread fast with the new dessert treat earning the nickname Dr. Dave's among the students. And when word spread outside La Trobe, the banana split gained national recognition. Over the years, a few other small towns have tried to claim the banana split as their own invention. However, ice cream historians find that the evidence overwhelmingly supports Dr. Dave's as the original. And in 2004, the National Ice Cream Retailers Association certified this very spot to be the birthplace of the original banana split. David eventually bought the pharmacy where he worked, changing it from Tassel to Strickler's. Of course, there's a giant banana split to commemorate it all, right next to the first banana split historical marker. So before we got here, the origins of this thing were a little bit hazy, but Brianna did some digging for us and found out where it came from. A sculptor from New Alexandria, Pennsylvania. The guy was just here painting it. That was the guy that was outside. Did, oh. and you, did you talk to him? Brianna bolted out the door. We chased after her to an art gallery just a few doors down. She was just in time. John Mayer was still in town. He's the man behind the big banana split. I've been a sculptor in concrete or cement for pretty much all my life, I guess. The Latrobe High School got my name. They called me and asked if I would teach a semester at the art department for the uh, high school seniors. I was reluctant because I never taught, and I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not a teacher. But anyhow, my wife says, no, do it. And by going, when I did it, I enjoyed it. I loved it. And in the fall of 2016, he taught two senior art classes. The one class was all girls, the other class had one boy. So it's basically all girls <laughs> in, in the art department. He told all the students that for their final project, size was no object, as long as they could fit it out the school's doors. One class decided to sculpt their school's mascot, the Wildcat, and the other. The one class said, we want to do the banana split. And I thought, oh, gee, the banana split is made up of six parts seven parts including the cherry. They're all individual. The whole thing is made over a galvanized metal armature, bent into shape, and then covered with fiberglass reinforced cement. Then that got painted. We had one semester to do it. Oh wow. And which was ambitious, <laughs> uh, you know, to say the least. And we did it by one day. We had one day left. And as for getting it through those school doors, the dish was a tight squeeze. It went out by a sixteenth of an inch. <gasps> Yeah, oh my it, it actually scraped. It actually <laughs> scraped going on. It, but it made it. But it made it. Here's the proud class of young sculptors standing beside their big banana split. It lived on the school's campus for a while, then moved downtown next to the old Strickler's location. While we spoke to John, a friend of his worked diligently repainting the entire sculpture so it would be shining bright when throngs of banana split lovers filled the streets of Latrobe just a few days later. But it wouldn't be the only John Mayer sculpture mingling with the masses. In fact, just down the block, I have a piece in this parklet right here. In the parklet stands this intricately woven totem. The J.A. Mayer signature is how you can always tell if John crafted a sculpture in and around Latrobe. 
trove. And when we went to check that out, who should we run into but John's wife, Valerie? She encouraged us to take another quick detour to the nearby Winnie Palmer Nature Preserve, where just inside you'll find this amazing bee and honeycomb sculpture. His signature is on the bee. Valerie also told us, next time we go to Kennywood Park, to keep an eye out for these roses. Those are his too. The Winnie Palmer Nature Preserve is about halfway between downtown Latrobe and our next stop, Valley Dairy, which is an integral part of the Banana Splits legacy because of a gentleman known as Ice Cream Joe. Ice Cream Joe owned Valley Dairy, and he was good friends with David Strickler back in the day. At the Great American Banana Split celebration, right smack in the center of it all is the Valley Dairy Tent, where an assembly line slices, scoops, and sweetens a seemingly never-ending convoy of banana splits all weekend. Right here in the thick of it is Kevin Blystone, grandson of Ice Cream Joe. Joe was the president of Valley Dairy from 1989 to 2009, and he spearheaded the group of Latrobians who petitioned for the historical marker downtown. Long after David Strickler passed away in 1971, it was Ice Cream Joe who became the face of the Latrobe Banana Split, and whose contributions to Latrobe's recognition as its birthplace are what many point to as the catalyst to this whole giant celebration. And so, just outside downtown Latrobe, just past John Mayer's Honeycomb, is Valley Dairy, where you'll find Kevin and his brother Alex tending to the restaurant and ice cream bar. My great-grandfather started the company, his name was Joe, and then he passed it over to his son, who's also named Joe, and then passed it to my mother, who's Melissa, and then, again, my name's Alex, and this is my brother, Kevin. We're gonna be fourth generation business owners, hopefully someday. And what keeps Valley Dairy the destination for banana splits after all these decades? We're one of the only places where you can get it the original way it was made way back in the day whenever David Strickler invented it. Believe it or not, this was about to be my first banana split ever. Kevin showed us the ropes. First, take one banana and slice it down the center. Remove the peel. So the original way that we make them here, as you can see, you got the strawberry on the side with the strawberry topping on top of that. The vanilla goes in the middle with the pineapple topping on top of that. The chocolate on the other side with the chocolate syrup on top of that. Then whipped cream. And I'm allergic, but on Ryan's, tradition dictates a sprinkle of nuts. Finally, cherries on top and... Last but not least, got the American flag right in the middle. Yeah, and they're definitely shareable size. They are a big dessert. Nonsense. I'm not sharing this with anyone. What Alex doesn't realize is the only thing bigger than this banana split is my appetite for ice cream. I think you just gotta dig in. It's gonna be messy. Oh, that's good. That's really good. You go for the chocolate first. Mmm. Mmm. That's really so good. good. Oh my god, I mean, it's amazing. One of America's most beloved desserts, whipped up in its hometown by the family who made it famous. Does it get any better than that? This is me with the bowl cut back in the day, eating a Sunday. We asked Alex how it felt to be a part of Latrobe and American history. It feels awesome. I'm glad that you know we get the opportunity to continue to promote the banana split. And like I said, we're going to make thousands of them this weekend. So it's just awesome. It feels great. And thousands is right. Just look at this line. When we arrived at the Great American Banana Split celebration, things were in full swing, with Ligonier and Main Street bustling with performers, crafters, and tons of fun activities for kids and adults. And of course, in the middle of it all, we immediately ran into Brianna, who talked Ryan into participating in one of the weekend's signature events. The banana cream pie eating contest, it's two o'clock on Saturday. It's bananas. Jack Shorthouse, Ryan Quinn. Woo! The goal was speed. Whoever finished their pie first was the winner, with the important rule that reversals were not allowed. You had to keep it all down. Three, two, one, go! And despite it being roughly 100 degrees, and the fact that I don't have Cassie's talent for scarfing down seemingly impossible quantities of sweets and ice cream, I gave it my best shot. Look on your right, let's give her a round of applause. Come on, she's killing it over here. But I was no match for a woman at the far end of the table. Madison Zepp is your 2023 champion. Amid the celebration, just a quick walk down the block is another point of interest, paying tribute to no doubt the most famous Latrobian of all, Mr. Rogers. This bronze sculpture was created by John Hare of St. Petersburg, Florida, and from the shade of James H. Rogers Park, we could hear the warm-up notes of another celebration staple, the banana band. I have to talk about the banana band. 
A family that has been super helpful in this event, and I'm going to call them out, the Panicelli family. It was probably 2018. They decided they were just going to play their instruments, you know, up and down the street. So it was just a couple kids at that time. Every year, like, more people would add to it. Some of the local bands, they were like, oh, can we be in the banana band? And we said, sure, anybody can be in it, you know? And it's just really fun. And so, as the banana band's music rings through the streets of La Trobe, the legacy of this small town's contribution to the American zeitgeist is celebrated by locals and travelers, young and old. For our part, we took a big slice of it home with us. We picked up this banana bed for our cat, Trip. He's still getting used to it, but we think he likes it. I mean, who wouldn't want to sleep in a giant banana? And in the abundant joy of the three-day celebration of an American culinary pastime, our friend John Mayer hopes one small thing won't be forgotten and has a final hope for this wonderful roadside attraction. Yeah, I thought, you know, it should have a plaque on it because these girls were wonderful and I thought, you know, they're all going to get married and have kids and they can bring their kids back someday yeah. and say, look, my name's on the banana split. And good news, Brianna is already on it. Just today we decided that it would be probably a good idea to put a little plaque on the front of the statue. So, plaque coming soon. But for now, the fresh paint has the banana split looking spectacular. And incidentally, before we sign off, there was one other fresh coat of paint nearby that we had to check out. Greensburg, Pennsylvania is only 15 minutes away from La Trobe, and that's where Lug Nuts Tire and Auto Service is. You all remember Lug Nuts, right? That's the home of the famous headless muffler man. Except, looky here, the Greensburg muffler man got his head put back on. Yes, indeed. After years of terrifying unsuspecting drivers, on July 26, 2023, the crew at Lugnuts reattached the head and in the following days also repainted the entire thing. Suffice to say, he is looking amazing. And so whether it's a relatively new roadside attraction, like the Banana Split, or one that's over half a century old, like the Muffler Man, the keepers of the roadside shores persist in maintaining these uniquely American curiosities so that road trippers can enjoy them for decades to come. It's perfect, thank you so much. So we've done a lot of detours in the show, but this one is definitely one of the sweetest. So I'm gonna finish this, then I'm gonna go get another one, and then we'll see you on the next quick detour.